Welcome back to my channel, Mother Suckers. Hey, she's here, honey, she's here, and it's been a minute since I've done an Unpopular Opinions video, so if you don't know about my Unpopular Opinions video, girl, get ready. Let's get into it. First and foremost, Portia Williams and Risa Tisa are the same person, okay? They both ignored the red flags because the man presented money and a lifestyle that they weren't used to. Um, they were both chasing a fairy tale and got married way too soon and didn't properly vet the men that they were marrying. Now, the difference is y'all praise Portia and y'all scrutinize Risa Tisa based on how they look. Y'all call Risa desperate and fat. The Breakfast Club said she had big back energy and women with big backs are desperate. I mean, it don't. It really don't matter how many inches your back is. Anybody can be a victim of desperation. Like, where was this energy for Portia? I literally saw Portia being praised, people saying that she's smart, that she was chasing the bag. And I'm looking like this actually wasn't smart at all. And this divorce is about to get real messy for her. Like, did we forget who Simon is? Simon and Legion are the same man in different tax brackets, okay, different levels of scams. And the true only difference is we didn't get Portia's 50 series of what happened. We got literally floating in Dubai, boom, divorce. We got nothing in between. I actually give Risa more credit because she actually admitted that she was desperate for marriage, chasing a man who allegedly had money, ignored all the red flags, and didn't take the time to know him before getting married. Mia Culpa was a good movie. Y'all tried to trick me. Y'all really tried to trick me. You cannot trick me. You cannot trick me. I mean, I'm not saying it's Oscar worthy or anything like that, but the way y'all was trashing this movie on Twitter, I really, honestly, it was a point where I was like, I'm not even gonna watch it, it's a waste of time. And then I had a little time and I was like, you know what, let me just watch it, let me support my girl Kelly. And it wasn't, it wasn't as bad as y'all made it seem. And it's currently the number one movie on Netflix in the country, so people are watching this movie. I mean, honestly, I feel like I've seen worse Tyler Perry movies. This movie didn't give me Tyler Perry. I don't know if because Kelly Rowland starred in it, but this movie didn't give me Tyler and like his stereotypical um, storylines. Now I do have some questions and confusions, okay? And I did not like how weak she was. You know, she never stood up to his family or his parents. I didn't like that, but I'm like, you know what? There are women that can relate. There are women who are in relationships where their voices are not heard. They don't speak up for themselves. They don't defend themselves. And just because I couldn't personally relate doesn't mean that it does not happen. But y'all let me know how you felt about this movie down in the comment section on a scale of one to 10. What would you give this movie? Let me know if you want to review. I'm down to watch it again, take notes, and review it for you guys here on my channel. Just let me know, okay? Black History Month ended with a diaspora war this year, and I really don't understand why the diaspora wars are still happening. And you know what? Unpopular, but maybe popular opinion. I think a lot of these diaspora war trollers, you know, they're white men, they're bots, they're paid actors used to purposefully divide us as a people. I'm telling y'all, like, I, I don't believe that these are real people, but I do feel like it's easy for all sides to get caught up in the trap. So someone posted, dear African women, African men love this hairstyle so much, do it more often. And it's a photo of, well, it's multiple photos of um, someone wearing cornrows. Now, it was obviously an appreciation post, but someone retweeted it and said, this is not an African hairstyle, this is a black American hairstyle. I was always under the impression that everyone knew that braids originated in Africa. However, the term corn rolls originated in America and that black women all over the globe, you know, we're innovative, we're creative, we're talented, so we can take a style and change it. Now, Twitter added context and said, this is in fact an African hairstyle known as corn rolls, Ghana weaving, all back, plus many other names across the diaspora. This post is denying the significance in many cultures across Africa. And so the trap was set, the war begun, happy Black History Month. It's, it's just ridiculous at this point, and a white man get paid off for all of that. Speaking of Africa, I still don't know how I feel. As much as I love Tyla, as beautiful as she is, and as much as I love her song, Water, I still don't know how to feel about her winning that Grammy. Like... I believe she won the best African performance and I'm just confused like where did she perform TikTok? I, I really don't get the premise of <laughs> the win and the category. 
especially when you have girlies like Ira Starr, I mean, Thames. And if we're talking based on performance and not really the music itself, I mean, Burna Boy is available. And he was literally chosen to perform at the Grammys. So I'm like, obviously he performs very well. I mean, it would have just made sense that he won in that category, but Tyler won. Shout out to Tyler, shout out to South Africa. I'm not mad at it. I'm just confused. <laughs> As much as they play it off, the city girls are not as close as they used to be. And it's really all because of Diddy. I mean, I'm sure he pumped up Carisha's head, let her know that she's the prettier one, she's the more talented one. He probably even told her that she don't need to do music, that he could make her a multi-millionaire, even billionaire, without the music and without JT. I don't put nothing past Diddy when it comes to music and business. He's conniving, backstabbing, sneaky and everything he's going through right now is because of the conniving, backstabbing, and sneaky things that he's done to a lot of artists back in the day. And so I am curious to see who owns Carisha Please, like what's gonna happen with that platform that he helped her build? Now that he's being sued left and right, he's losing endorsements, he's losing businesses, he's losing contracts, he's losing money. Allegedly, child. And I'm sure we will start seeing more music from Carisha and possibly collab with JT, or maybe she'll go solo. I'm really a whore. Like, I'm a, like, with a, with a W. Like, I'm a whore. I mean, I ain't mad at JT. She distanced herself for a reason. Child, she said, I'm going to the opera with Solange. Y'all could get pissed on if y'all want to. So Chili posted a video teaching her new boo how to dance, and someone referred to her as chocolate, and she corrected them and said caramel. Now, obviously the person was referring to her as chocolate because she is with a white man, which is typical people to call black women chocolate when they when they are with white people. Within the black community amongst black folks, obviously we call people who are darker chocolate. And let me remind Chili that a box of chocolates come in a lot of different flavors and shades of melanin, okay? However, it was really weird and cringy that instead of just saying thank you, she had to be like, no, I'm lighter than chocolate. Like that essentially she's like, no, I'm not that dark. <laughs> like she even mentioned in one of the comments, like, you know, I'm tanned right now, but I'm usually caramel, but it doesn't matter because we're talking about right now. We're looking at a video and saying, you look chocolatey in this video. And she tans beautifully. Like I think it, it, it should have just been taken as a compliment unpopular opinion i thought chili was caramel <laughs> like like i said i think she tans very easily and very beautifully um but i thought she was considered caramel y'all let me know because i see everybody in the comments saying you're chocolate you're chocolate you're dark you're dark you know i have seen darker caramel i'm just saying let me pull up some pics this is the type of caramel candy i used to eat growing up and the toffees so i thought chili was caramel like what <laughs> I never thought caramel meant light skin. I thought caramel meant like somewhere in between with some darker undertones. Sometimes you a little lighter, sometimes you a little, like, I don't know. But yeah, she definitely was the darkest. Um, I think she has Bangladeshi roots and they tend to have like redder undertones as well. But regardless of that, it was definitely cringy and she definitely doesn't take being chocolate, being called chocolate as a compliment. It's like, no, I'm not that dark. You know when people say, oh, oh, you so dark, you pretty. And you hear somebody say, I'm not that dark. It's like, <laughs> it doesn't make sense, but it's colorism math. You know what I mean? It, it's colorism math. I also see the same conversations around light skin Keisha and her name. And people say, light skin Keisha, not even light skin. And she'll be like, yes, I am. And I'll be looking like, I thought she was. But they'll say that she's not light skin, she's caramel. They'll also say Beyonce's not light skin. So I don't know, I really don't care. Um, black is beautiful, how about that? Now, speaking of Miss Queen B, um, one of her school photos dropped, adorable, um, and also a clip of her family saying that, you know, a lot of the black girls were jealous of her because she was light skinned and had, you know, light hair and light eyes, long hair and lighter eyes resurfaced. And with all that we know about anti-blackness, colorism, and childhood bullying, can we please stop villainizing little black girls? And that goes for light, caramel, and chocolate, okay? Can we please stop? I mean, this picture on the right, people were saying, oh, I can tell those girls were jealous of her. Oh yeah, those black girls were definitely jealous of Beyonce. And it's like, also, why does it always have to be jealousy because someone's light skin? Like, why? They talked about her not having a lot of friends. And when they asked one of the little girls, why aren't you friends with Beyonce? She said, because I don't want to, like, I don't like her. 
And they just made up this whole story that, oh, it's because she's pretty, she's light skinned and she has long hair. And it's like, stop projecting that onto kids. Kids have real life personalities and sometimes their personalities mesh with other kids and sometimes it doesn't. Really and truly, I think Beyonce's kind of always had like a kind of anti-social personality and there's nothing wrong with that. She likes the company of money and her family. And you know what? Me too. <laughs> But yeah, you can see clips of Beyonce in her 20s, clips of Beyonce, you know, around all types of women. And she honestly behaves the same way with everyone. I can totally see her being a little girl and just being like, mm, I don't want to be friends with y'all. I want to just write songs or something like that. You know, let's just stop with the narrative that little dark skin girls are bullies. And if they choose not to like a little light skin girl, it's because they're jealous. Let's just stop that. Oh, look at these two little cute babies, y'all. I got baby fever real, real, real bad. I want a daughter real, real bad. But y'all, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section on today's unpopular opinions. Let me know what you agree with, what you disagree with. If you have any insight on any of these topics, feel free to drop your opinions respectfully down below. Like I always say, opinions are like buttholes. We all have one, okay? Be sure to like and subscribe. We're on our way to 400K subscribers. Help your girl get there. And I will see y'all at the next one. Later.